Hello and welcome back to part two. So what I'm trying to develop or build is this kind of team sheet here on the left hand side and I'm using Ravi Mystery's dashboard as kind of inspiration of how we would set this up. Now one thing Ravi did was he's broken this actually into two tables. All right, so the, the first table is the starters and, and the kind of subs, the time they come off, and then he has a separate table for the bench here. And if you just followed along in part one, that's certainly something you would be ready to go and, and create. I'm going to do another kind of step in between, and I actually want to be able to list all of these starters or subs in the in the one table. So not having to create two tables. And that means I need to do a little bit more work in Tableau Prep. So let me just show you what we're kind of looking, what I'm looking for for my final outcome. Okay, so you can see here both teams, the little icon to say they came off, what minute, and then we've the three subs, again an icon and what minute they they came on. Okay, and the key to this is having the player name, all of the players, starters or subs, here in one column. Okay, uh, and you can see here if I show, I've hidden some of these headers, you can see here I've broken into subs and starters. But really what I need is all of the players' names in, in one column. And when I look at my data set, that's not what I've got. Okay, so if we go back to Tableau Prep, uh, ignore this one. This is the one I prepared earlier. Uh, where we left it off the last day was, if we have a look at player name here. We have 22 values in player name which is obviously all the starters. And we joined on, so added additional columns, we joined on the substitute minute and the substitute name. So the six subs were joined on here. But for example, Arigi or Eric Dyer doesn't appear in the player name column. And that's the kind of bit I just want to tidy up. As I said, if you wanted to do it the way Ravi did it with the two separate tables, starters and subs, uh, part one is, is enough to get going on that. Uh, I'm going to do a kind of an additional step. And again, I suppose the reason I would do this is because it's automated. I only have to do this once and it becomes much cleaner for all of the other uh, files that I ever want to run through this. That's why I, I think the automation is worth the, the extra bit. Okay, so a couple of things just to tidy up. The first is I removed a lot of columns in this kind of subs branch here and I so I want some of them back. So I'm just going to kind of undo. So all I did there was I opened up the changes panel on this step and I undid or re-showed all of the column names. And basically I want to keep all the match details, which I'll show you in a second why. And really the ones I want to get rid of are all of these. So I'm going to keep the team. Okay, so I'm just removing those. So again, if you followed along in part one, I had removed competition name, season name, and so on. I'm just kind of putting them back in. That's my first step. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an entirely kind of separate branch. So you see that I'm adding a clean step, but it's not part of the existing workflow. Okay, so everything I've already built still comes out of this clean step here, number eight. And I'm just adding something in here now that I want to be able to do. So what do I need to be able to do? So in this data set now, player ID and the player name are the starters who came off. And basically my subs are listed over here. So if you remember from Tableau, what I want is one column called player name. And whether they're the starters or the subs, I don't care. I want them all in the one column. So really what I need to do is replace these two with these two. And so I'm going to start, I'm going to remove these two fields. And I'm going to just rename this to be player ID. And this one to be player name. Okay. And now what I want to do is add this back into this data set. Okay. Now, when I try and add this in, I get kind of two options. You'll see union and join. Join is what we did back here in part one. And join will add additional columns. So it's a bit like a V lookup in Excel, if that's what you're used to. Okay, so it finds a match and it adds additional columns on, on the end. 
what I want is to stack them on top of each other. So essentially I want these, which were the substitutes, to sit in the same column as the player name data up here. So instead of a join, I'm going to use a union. Okay, and what Tableau Prep does is it shows you you've got two data sources. So your inputs are the brown kind of chain and this blue chain. And it shows you what fields have been matched or unmatched. So these are all the unmatched fields. Okay, now I'm not too concerned about those just for the moment. Really what I want to show you is if we find player name, and a good thing is that you'll see if it has both colors, it, it found a match. Um, so I want to find player ID. So you see now I have 28 player IDs and 28 player names. So it's the 22 starters plus the six subs. Okay, so I now have all of the data in all of the players in, in one column. Okay, Okay. this is looking really close now. A couple of small little tidy up things that I want to do is when I've added back in some of the columns I'd originally deleted, I ended up with some duplicate column names. And you'll know that by, it appends the number one or two or three, depending on how many duplicates you have, onto it. So these are just duplicate columns. They're already in the data set. And I just want to highlight them and remove them. So if we go back to our union, you'll see our list of names. Now, what has not matched? What's not stacked on top of each other? Position ID, position name. So I don't have those for the subs, or I certainly didn't see them in the data set, but for now I don't have them. Same as squad number. And the substitutes, obviously if they were, not every player had a substitute ID or a name, not every player was substituted, and the tactics formation. So otherwise, this looks really, really clean and kind of a nice data set. Now, it's an extra step, but I think I think it's worth it. So what I'm going to do is just output this team sheet to a CSV file. Okay, and now I can go and run the workflow creates it in less than a second. And if I jump back to Tableau now, um, I have this one here, this team sheet. Really nice, clean data set. And if I take player name and team name to filters, and let's just start with Liverpool here. You can see now I have the 14 players. So the starters and the subs. Okay. So let me build up the kind of nice visual here that I had. So first thing is I'm going to add in event type because I want to split out the starters and the subs. That's the first thing I want to do. And I also want the order to be right. Okay, so uh, Virgil van Dijk is listed last. He should be you know third or fourth in terms of centre back. Now luckily we have a position ID field here in the data set. And I can add that in. You can see there it numbers the players pretty much in the order they should appear. I also want the position name listed. And this is starting to look a little bit more like what I'm after. Okay, now what else? So I have these little icons is, is one. And then I have the minute they came on. So in order to create the icons... What I want to do is create a, a calculated field. Okay, and a calculated field is just an additional step within the data. And I just basically want to know is where they a starter, if they were a sub, do they come off or do they go on? That kind of thing. Okay, so I'm just going to call it sub on, off. Now bear with me now while I, I kind of create this. It'll look more complicated than it is. But I, I essentially we just want to identify was was a player subbed on or off. That's, that's really what I'm after. Okay, so what we can say is if the event type equals sub. Okay, so if you were a substitute, substitute and the minute is greater than zero, then we'll call that on. Okay. Else if. Uh, 
Um, spell else. So else if event type equals starting. So if they were in this bucket and dot is null uh, substitution outcome ID. So this is basically telling me if there's some value in there. So if there's something in substitution outcome ID and you could pick any of the substitution fields, then they came off. else start and it doesn't actually matter what you call these you could call them one two three and um, i just want to identify these three as different things okay let's see now did that work so in order to create the little icons what i'm going to do is change the mark type here to a shape and i'm going to put that sub on off onto shape and what i should see now is i've got pluses for people who play the full game I have zeros or circles for people who were taken off and I have squares for people who came on. So it looks like my calculation has worked. And now what I want to do is go in and update these shapes. Okay. So you've some you can select on, you can actually even load your own in as well. So if somebody came off, let's use a down arrow. If they came on, let's use that. And if they started, let's use a circle. Okay, looks good. I'm also going to add the exact same calculated field to my color. I'm going to go in and edit the colors. And if you came off, we'll mark that as red. If you came on, it'll be green. And I'm going to just pick white for this. So it'll actually disappear. So now you can see I have red arrows for the players who come off, green arrows for the players who come on. And the last little bit I want to add is minute to the label. And it'll show me what minute all of this happened in. Okay, starting to look pretty nice. I'm just going to do a few more little bits just to tidy this up. So I don't have positions for the subs. Maybe it's in the data, but I, I didn't um, I didn't see it. So what I'm going to do is edit the alias here just to a blank space. So it looks a little bit neater. Um, I'm also going to hide this. And I'm going to hide this. I only needed them to kind of break out the, the differences. And now what I'm going to do is kind of format the lines here. Okay, so uh, I need row divider like that. I don't want any column dividers. And on my row dividers, let's bump it up a little bit. Okay, it's looking good. I can hide those labels happy with that um, yeah I'm pretty happy with with that and the great advantage now is I have it built so if I show the filter here for Liverpool and I swap it to Tottenham I get exactly the same thing built okay now if I was putting this into a dashboard what I'd call this is Tottenham. once I'm happy I've built one correctly then just duplicate it call this one Liverpool and swap the filters around and now when I go to create a dashboard, I'll just put in a blank and then a horizontal. And then what we can do is put Tottenham there, put a blank in the middle and put Liverpool over that side. And I don't need any of these kind of keys here, so I can delete those. But I now have two team lineups set up. And obviously I could rerun my prep workflow for multiple games or different games. And all of my building is done. And I kind of have two really nice, clean team sheets built. Okay, a two-parter, but hopefully really useful and worth the effort to automate that kind of process. Thanks for watching.